On this episode of Money Matters with Jim Doyle, the accidental business owner, featuring guest Kavita Kent of Balance Medical Center and the West Coast Women's Clinic with Jill Van Jean and Heather Odendahl. Plan more, worry less. This is Money Matters with Jim Doyle. Not everyone's path to becoming an entrepreneur starts with a strong dream to own and operate a business. Welcome. Today's show considers our business owner who never had designs to be an entrepreneur, whose designs to own a business came about in an unexpected way. Starting a business requires a willingness to take risks, but for the accidental business owner, the process can be all-consuming. From negotiating leases to sorting out HR, working with allied professionals and cultivating your own business culture, there may not be enough hours in the day. Today, we're going to introduce you to a business owner who overcame these challenges. We started Balance Medical Center in 2011 um, and when we started it was basically my ex-partner and me at, in our kitchen table um, with a vision to create a functional medicine center eventually and a few years later we opened up our first sort of physical location and our dream and vision sort of came to fruition. The doctors that practice at, this, at the clinic. Uh, they practice functional medicine and integrative medicine, which really wasn't very available. Um, and how that differs from the conventional system is, is really getting to the root cause of what could be causing illness. Taking the time to really find out who this patient is, what their history is, what they're bringing to the table, um, and, and really dedicating a focus to figuring out on their health journey, how they can bring meaningful change and meaningful health back to their life. This is where we do IV treatments. Um, intravenous vitamin therapy has been shown to have extreme benefit for patients that require uh, an additional boost and have a, a deficiency. We have a plethora of private lab testing that we have access to that can tell you anything from um, your micronutrients and, and mineral levels um, to comprehensive stool testing, uh, very comprehensive hormone assessments. Uh, so we have food sensitivity testing, DNA genetic testing, a lot of, of, of really great tools uh, for patients to access. In uh, 2014, we were approached by another functional medicine clinic. Um, the physicians there were proud of the business that they had um, created, but really wanted to focus on the medicine. Uh, and so they approached us um, and wanted to see if we wanted to align and, and merge. And we eventually bought them out. Um, and so I now run two practices, Balance Medical Center as well as West Coast Women's Clinic. We are now up to, you know, we started just at the kitchen table with, with one doctor and, and me, and now we're, we have nine amazingly strong female physicians who provide this kind of care um, to, to our, our um, patients. When we come back, Kavita Kent joins me in studio. As I participated in it, it really became evident that this was my calling. It was an opportunity for me to live out all of my passions. Kavita, welcome. Thank you, Jim, for having me. You know, uh, I understand that your path to business ownership was unexpected. Uh, do you want to tell us about those early days? The early days were challenging. There was a long and steep learning curve, a lot that needed to be explored and researched, and uh, but exciting. You know, it was it was an opportunity to present, um, you know, the kind of uh, practice that we wanted to, um, you know, right from foundation up. And, and so it was um, 
nerve-wracking and exciting, um, but you know, a lot, a lot to take on, um, and uh, and it was it was an, an adventure, I would say. Now we're dying to know how is it that you became the accidental business owner. Well, I came on board really just to help out. It wasn't um, it wasn't an, uh, a me taking on a, a founding role in the business, but it was me just helping out my partner and um, and grow the kind of practice and the kind of business that he wanted to. As I participated in it, it really became evident that this was my calling. It was an opportunity for me to live out all of my passions and my goals in terms of uh, what I wanted to accomplish in my career. Now I can hear some of the passion leaking out there. You know, successful business owners overcome obstacles. So let's hear what Jill Van Jean has to say. So Jill, your business journey was not the traditional path. What sorts of challenges did that present to you? The biggest challenge I've had to overcome is letting go of some of the more fun and creative aspects of building a business in favor of getting into the numbers, the logistics, the inventory, and really planning out your year. Uh, that's been a big challenge for me. I'm a very creative-minded person, which is why I never envision myself in a business role because I think it takes a very precise mind to uh, excel in business, which isn't necessarily true, um, as I found out later, but I found some of the more um, challenging aspects of uh, the business to be the day-to-day -day operations, where I wasn't sort of free to express my creative side. I had to really dig into the legal, the accounting, and uh, the inventory side of things, and understanding how all of that works and how I'm gonna be able to run this business without this particular set of expertise. Working with entrepreneurs, I often see the struggle of balancing the creative and money side of business. Kavita, um, what are your thoughts on Jill's comment, uh, it takes a precise mind to be an entrepreneur? You know, I, I think that Jill hits a really good point. You need a balance of both. You need to express that creativity and that passion, but also recognize that looking between the lines on a balance sheet is important. And only you are the one who understands your business. Um, you need to keep a, a, a close eye on, on those numbers and on the day-to-day the -day operations. Um, but at the same time, don't let it muddle you down and, um, you know, and get the help that you need. There are amazing resources um, that you can reach out to um, that can help support your business. Now, was there anything else about Jill's comments that kind of rang true with you? For me, the, the thing is, is that I actually have a business degree and, and so I was able to really harness all the things that I learned in university in terms of marketing and legal and, and contract law, all of those things really helped me in, in my business. It gave me the confidence to know that when those particular challenges came up, I had the tools and resources in my back pocket. So Kavita, a lovely background, getting some good skills. What surprises were there for you in terms of things that you had to learn immediately? The number one thing with, with running my practice and, and my business has been taking and getting the right people on board. As I said, um, finding the people that want to help you grow your business is, is paramount to the success of it. And for me, I, I never realized how intimately affected I was going to be by everyone else's life decisions. You know, if someone has a baby or if someone decides to move to a different country um, or their child is sick that day and, you know, they can't, they can't come to work. There's, you're so affected by, by um, you know, by the, the players in your team and as a small business owner, it all falls on you. We'll be right back. It is a lot of hard work and, and there's a lot of pressure and ultimately, you know, the, the buck stops at you. Welcome back. Kavita, 
prior to the show, uh, you mentioned that as a business owner, uh, you hadn't anticipated how everyone else's life uh, affected yours. Uh, can we talk about what HR means to you? HR means a lot to me. I consider every person on my team to be one of the most valuable assets on my balance sheet. Um, you know, for me, finding the right people to support your business is, is, has been the, the number one key driver to, to the success of, of both of our practices. Um, so for me, HR has always been cultivating a family relationship. We spend more time with these people at work than we do sometimes with our own families. And so having the right people really does make the biggest difference when it comes to um, you being able to take care of all the other things that need to be done as a small business owner. You know, your responsibilities are overshadowed by sometimes, you know, the, the, the everyday duties that you get stuck in. So finding the right people to, to help support with that so that you can take care of the overlying, um, you know, all, all the other business issues uh, is, is really important. Now, Kavita, I really hear that common phrase a lot from successful businesses. Being an entrepreneur can be exciting. Let's hear what Heather Odenthal of W North has to say about it. Heather, you've referred to yourself as the accidental entrepreneur. Why is that? As a female, I was having some challenges moving up the corporate ladder. So I took a look at my company and I realized there were very few women in the top three levels of leadership at my company and many others. And a lot, at the time, a lot of people were talking about how there were more CEOs named John or Dave than there were women CEOs. But no one was really talking about the pipeline and the reason that there were few women to choose from in the C-suite. I decided that if it was something I was seeking, there were others looking for it. So reluctantly, the reluctant entrepreneur and myself pulled my event hat out and in 2015, I started the first W North conference to support women on their leadership journey. Do you have any tips for your younger self? Definitely. So what I would say to my younger self is work for somebody else before you work for yourself. There are so many potential mistakes or failures that you will make as an entrepreneur. I shouldn't even say you could make. Uh, and so being able to learn from somebody who has had that lived experience is invaluable. Another thing I would say is don't get wrapped up in the glamification of entrepreneurship. It is tough, and so you have to have grit and determination. And finally, the last thing I would say is don't be afraid to start your business as a side hustle before you go out on your own. I started my business as a side hustle and I worked at my business for six years before I quit my corporate job. Because for me, it was important that when I left my corporate role, my business was paying me more than my previous role. Now, I love Heather's comments about the glamification of entrepreneurship. Do you feel she's on the mark? Absolutely. You know, there is, I feel, a, um, as she mentioned in, in media especially, there is this, um, if you're a business owner, and, and often when I tell people that I'm a business owner, their eyes light up and they're like, wow, that's, that's incredible, that's so great. And yes, it is great, it totally is, but it is a lot of hard work. And, and there's a lot of pressure, and ultimately, you know, the, the buck stops at you, and so it you have to, to, to realize that, that it can be a steep and, and, and t tough cliff to climb, um, but there is a, a lot of really um, rewarding things that you get at the, the top of the cliff. Do you want to share any secrets that your business education didn't plan you for? I think what my, my business degree didn't didn't um, prepare me for was was just how personal I would feel about my business, and how much I needed it to to really reflect who I was and what my values were. Um, and so, you know, 
making sure that, that I was true to myself in that business and, and, and making sure that it was an accurate reflection of who I am and, and, and how I want to present myself to the world. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize how, how much I would personally feel like this is my baby. <laughs> Did you ever have any experiences where you weren't taken seriously as an entrepreneur? Yeah, yeah, I have. You know, I um, I remember when um, I was shopping around for a new lease. Um, I needed to move the physical location of, of one of my clinics, and and I and I don't know whether it's a an ageist thing and, and or or the fact that I was um, a female entrepreneur, but I did find that. Often, in um, when I was out there looking for and negotiating leases, that there was the sense that oh, she she doesn't know what she's doing. We can you know we can um, um, we'll start over here, and where they started was so far from where we actually ended up negotiating that it really made me feel like why did we start up here? Why did you like were you trying to pull the wool over my eyes kind of thing? But. Um, but in the end, again, I think I've, I've mentioned leaning on the right resources is, is key. So, um, you know, I, I do trust in my ability um, to, to negotiate and, and handle stresses, but at the same time, I reached out to other business owners um, and, and wanted to find out what their experience was. I love how you sought out the answers to that situation. That's wonderful. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Having a, a really strong accountant, you know, they were able to formulate the best success plan for me. Welcome back. We're here in studio with Kavita Kent, our accidental business owner. Kavita, so what tips would you have as a mentor for next-gen business owners? You know, Jim, I think the the key and and um, to, to success when you're owning a business is to build yourself a tribe, to make sure that you have the right people who are going to lend their support to you. Make sure you have a great lawyer. Make sure that you have a great accountant. That you have a family that's supportive of of your growth. Uh, surrounding yourself with the right people and cultivating a tribe that want to help you build and grow your business is the cru most crucial part, I feel, of, uh, of, of owning your own small business. Now, do you have a specific example of where your lawyer or your financial advisor or one of those allied professionals stepped up and helped you out? Absolutely. Um, you know, when I was um, considering, um, you know, going through a different lease, for example. Uh, I got the advice of my lawyer, and um, when I was considering, you know, a, a transition in, in my business structure, um, having a, a really strong accountant, you know, they were able to formulate the best success plan for me in terms of how to build out the right corporate structure um, for, you know, to protect myself, to protect my business, um, and and all the assets that we've worked so hard to, to achieve. Now, Kavita, I understand that you had one medical practice and then you acquired another medical practice, okay. How did these folks uh, step forward in that process to help? Well, when we bought up the, when we um, bought the second practice, um, that in itself was quite a challenge. When you're acquiring a practice that, al a business that already exists, you have to remember that there is an underlying corporate culture that has existed within that company for some time. So to, to accept that and then also to, um, to, to walk in and, and have your own um, agenda when it comes to what you want to do with this business, it's important to remember that you need to marry the two. Now Kavita, I really feel your care and I'm sure that the people that work for you can certainly feel that as well. I hope so. <laughs> So Kavita, thank you for your contributions to today's show. The path to entrepreneurship takes many different avenues. One common theme is a willingness to take risks. 
but the learning curve can be incredibly steep for an accidental business owner. Some describe business owners as firefighters, constantly putting out fires with the daily demands of running a business. It can be easy to lose sight of important matters like your financial health. Work with your accountant to better understand your financials. Schedule time in your calendar to regularly review your business plan. Develop a financial plan that looks after you and your family. And don't overlook your insurance needs, your will and power of attorney and other important legal documents. Successfully running a business requires a community. Now the process can be easier if you have a mentor, a mastermind or business group to help build those early business skills. Now I wish we had more time. Once more, I want to thank Kavita Kent, Heather Odendahl, and Jill Van Jean for sharing their thoughts on Money Matters. Because financial aspects touch so many elements of our lives, it pays to get great advice. Plan more, worry less.